get your presentation across. We would appreciate that. It's been a long day for a lot of us today. Uh, so we'll start with uh, 4A, Mr. Chuck Beach, Earth Week Organization Committee. Please come up. Highlights and leave out the lowlights. Earthquake 2018, there's the dates. Uh, uh, Earthquake Committee formed in 2007. You've seen this before. They do stuff around Earth Day. There's Earth, and there's the partners who make it happen. You better read quickly. And uh, there's Earth Day, April 22nd, started in 1970. This is the 48th anniversary. Uh, one of the uh, items we have is the clean and green community cleanups. And this is where you get garbage bags if you want to do a neighborhood cleanup and it's open to any uh, neighborhood group. And if in the county, you contact John Bishop uh, down at Sillaps, and he'll provide you with the garbage bags you need, and he'll arrange for the garbage pickup. I'm with uh, the Restore. You didn't know that. Neither did I until right now, and the speaker didn't show. So uh, they're moving right now from uh, Henry Street to Martin Ave, and they're having a special uh, Earth Week uh, event at their store. And right now, Tracy's going crazy moving. And Bob. A uh, little bit of background here. Um, Plant Tree Coalition was started in 2005 by Jim Berhalter of Apotex. Guy back there. And it's, uh, they put a little nursery in that year and some of their property, and that's been producing trees for quite a while. For the next five years, tree planting events took place on undevelopable city property along Sinclair Creek in the city's north end. Involvement started with a few local industry participants planting several hundred trees, but eventually included high school students and about 5,000 native trees were being planted per year. In 2011, a one-year project took place at Brant Park and involved mostly students. Uh, the Rant Tree Coalition's most ambitious product began the new forest in the city. Over a five-year period, many groups, including industry, students, and the public, all contributed to creating a 78-acre forest on undeveloped city property. The new forest at this point, uh, it says just read the slide, the new forest at this point has had about 70,000 trees planted 57, in it, 57,000 native trees and shrubs. We do a little tidy up each year. Trail system is mapped out and cut by the city and five permanent bridges were installed, so it's gonna be a great walking park. Grant Code Tree Coalition, this is the sequence we've gone through. At the bottom there, last year we planted Kramer's Way Stormwater Management Pond, uh, which had been kind of barren for quite a few years. It'll look a whole lot different in another two or three years. And here's some shots of the uh, various planting groups at Kramer's Way, mostly students in these shots, some, uh, some community people coming out. Um, we got quite a few people, summers in the neighborhood of uh, four to 500 students and another 250, probably 300 people from the community and various organizations. Okay, I'll do the next one. Yeah, okay. So this year's project is on uh, in the city, Brantford, if you 
decide not to go to the county one or you're busy when the county one's going on, you can come to the city on Sunday, April 22nd, Earth Day. And we're going to be making access to the property uh, that we're planting and then the property is actually adjacent to Brant Park and we're putting in a pollinator field and planting trees. So that's the city event. You'll hear more about what's been going on in the county in a few minutes. So very quickly, school ground greening. Uh, I've mentioned this in previous years. This is something we're very proud of at the Earth Week Committee. We're on our 11th product, project now of greening a schoolyard. And you get an idea from the before and afters what can transpire. And, we were, and when, when we work with the school, they get $9,000 seed funding. They get uh, the assistance of a school ground greening consultant. And they get a, a, a program manager, and his name is Jim McCracken. That's, some of you might know him. And this uh, last year was Princess Elizabeth Public School down in Eagle Place. And that's what it looked like before. That's what happened during. And there's a night shot of what happened. And this year we're here at St. Gabriel's uh, in West Brant, and they've come up with their plan. They're raising money, and this is the little program they put together. Thanks. My name's Mark. I'm with the Tim Horton Children's Foundation, and, and you probably know that we've got a place up in the corner of the county called Tim Horton Onondaga Farms. And uh, over there at the farm, we're building on the legacy of uh, environmental stewardship and empowering youth that was started by Gil and Molly Henderson more than 50 years ago. Um, you probably know that the, at the Tim Horton Children's Foundation, we believe that thriving youth help create thriving communities. So we work with low-income schools and low-income communities um, to bring the power of camp and foster the strengths that already exist within our youth so they can pursue a life without limits. And part of that is facilitating things like a tree planting day um, this year with Pauline Johnson uh, Collegiate and Paris District High School from right here in Paris. Our planting areas are strategically placed as windbreaks, erosion control, and protecting wetlands used for wildlife habitat. Additionally, foundation staff take part in roadside cleanups during Earth Week as well. We have partnerships uh, at the foundation with Ducks Unlimited Canada, Bird Studies Canada, Long Point Waterfowl. We're also the home of the Trumpeter Swan Restoration Program that was started right there at Onondaga Farms. And we partner with the uh, MNR in maintaining tall grass prairies. And one of the partnerships we're very proud of is partnering with the Canadian Chestnut Council and the University of Guelph to help bring the majestic uh, American sweet chestnut tree back from the brink of extinction. Uh, we currently have over 11,000 chestnut trees planted and are going to add 3,000 more this year. It's the largest chest plantation, chestnut plantation in the country. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jim Burhalter from Apotex Pharmacam in West Brant. Um, you heard about our, uh, oh, this isn't where I expected to be, but anyways. Uh, one of the things uh, that the Brant Tree Coalition plays high value on is giving high school students a hands-on environmental restoration experience. And so beginning in 2008, we began including students in our planting programs. And so for a few years now, We've had a separate planting day just for high school students where, we've had, where we have about 500 students uh, from all the area high schools, including uh, the Paris Dis District High School. This is uh, the morning class. We, it's a very strenuous uh, activity, as you can imagine, especially for high school kids. So we only ask them to plant for half a day, and that's, the morning of the, uh, that's a picture of the morning shift from last year. The afternoon shift picks up around uh, 12 o'clock, so they eat first, and uh, then we put them to work afterwards. Uh, and like the public uh, event this year, the students will be contributing to the planting of the uh, tree pollinator project adjacent to the Brant Park on a Wednesday, April 25th. I might just uh, take a moment to introduce the late and great Restore Tracy Langley. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm glad you came. Um, hello everyone, my name is Jaden Clark. I'm currently a student at PHS in grade 11 and I'm in the CALP program. Um, CALP is short for, for Community Environmental Leadership Program. It's a two credit um, program where you can take in either grade 11 or 12. Um, CALP is much different than most courses at PHS. It's more hands-on, you go on lots of field trips. And we have, um, sorry, 
lots of different opportunities to work with the Grand River Conservation Authority, and it also increases our primitive survival skills. This will be the fifth tree plant in Brant County, organized by the students of PHS. In 2014, we planted 500 trees at Lions Park. In 2015, we planted 700 trees in Green Lane. And in 2016, 2017, we planted 2,200 trees in Burford's Lions Park. With climate change being such an important topic for this generation to tackle, planting trees is a significant contribution to taking the CO2 out of the atmosphere. We're also bringing the community together to do something fun and good for our community. This year, we're shifting locations to St. George. We will be planting near Jacobs Woods to improve overall natural space around the trails and improve overall tree canopy in our county. This year, we are planting 400 trees, all native species. Many of these trees will be large potted specimens. We have lots of red oaks, sugar maples, white birch, white pine, white cedar. This will increase the diversity of our forest and surrounding areas. The tree plant is on April 28th from 10 till 12 p.m. We will have snacks, beverages, and music. This will be a family-friendly event, and we'd love to see as many people there as possible. This event has been created with the partnership between our students, TD Friends of Environment, the GRCA, Brant County, the Tree Coalition, and Lions Club. We hope to see you all there. Would you like to speak to that for a second? Pardon? Would you like to speak to that? Are you familiar with that? I'm sorry. Tara, is by, Tara Topping, lead teacher for KELP, advised me that they are going to have a recycling day on uh, at Paris District High School. I hope we were close to 10 minutes. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Just a, a very quick question to Chuck, and uh, just uh, I was looking at the presentation ahead of time, and I'm just wondering, um, are you guys are getting more organized at the presentations or the events growing? Um, is it growing, or is, or is it state level and off, or do we find more groups active? Because you've been at this for a while. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, members of committee, I, uh, number 4B, it looks like uh, Mr. Maines will not be here. He just wants it on record that he has a proposal for a uh, health hub, apparently. So uh, we'll receive it uh, when the time's ready. Uh, Councillor Gatward, if you could come up and take uh, the seat, please. Thank you. Continue with our agenda. And we've already approved the revised agenda, and we have a request from Paul McKegg, Peter Laberis, and Paul Halleck um, to talk regarding the a proposal for the family health team. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to come forward? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and just state members. your uh, name and uh, uh, information for the group, yeah. please. Uh, my name is Paul McKeg from Paul Sand Construction, and I'm representing uh, Zatia Group. 
To you, uh, Chair and uh, committee members, um, we understand that staff has been directed to move forward with the development of a community health hub. Various options are being considered with the Dundas Street uh, location being, node being uh, the preferred option, perhaps. We respectfully request that the committee receive the report CD18-32, but defer any action with that report at this time. This will allow us to make a full presentation in camera at the next council meeting uh, to be held on April 24th, 2018. We would like to present for consideration plans for the, from the Satia Group to develop the Community Health Hub with the leadership and cooperation from the county. We see this as an opportunity to develop a, a future health care hub for this community. We would like you to consider uh, locating the, sorry, <laughs> my apologies. Okay. I should have changed the page. But we uh, would like to, uh, uh, you to consider uh, three options that uh, you have in front of you uh, that we can uh, provide you. Given what we, this is what we specialize in, and uh, we are developers and landlords, uh, we uh, are confident that we can provide an excellent, sustainable, cost-effective community health care hub in the Dundas node for your consideration. Once, uh, if this decision is, uh, this report is deferred this week, we would like to come back in two weeks' time and uh, present a full presentation for your, for your uh, review. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss our proposal with you further, and we look forward to uh, providing you more detail as it comes available. Are there uh, anyone else to speak? Or? No. Here to answer potential okay. questions. Yeah. Any questions? Um, Councillor Booma. If I may, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, Paul, if I can ask, um, this, this has been an issue for a long time, and uh, we're kind of down to crunch time right now. Um, timing is of the essence because of the things going on with the hospital and at the Willet. Um, and, and this has been on the table on and off for a long, long time. Uh, why come now? when we're about to move on something? We, uh, we identified, we heard about the, uh, the, uh, the request and we have uh, the, the potential properties available and would like you to consider it. Um, so we're, we're ready to react very quickly. We can uh, provide some temporary uh, uh, facilities for the doctors uh, should, the, should the county request that. And then if I could a follow-up question, because of the timing, would you be okay if we approve the report um, and, 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 and still potentially allow you the opportunity to speak to us um, before council uh, in a couple of weeks? Yeah. yeah, certainly. Are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Coleman and then Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, unequivocally. So. And Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, I actually had two questions. Councillor Coleman just hit one of them. The other question I have is: Is it just space requirements? Um, why only one of these has a future senior center in it? That's not possible. And then the other, on the other two, is it just just space? Is that what we're looking at? It, it just didn't make it to the print. Uh, that's available for all the options. And, uh, and we really just wanted to give you a snapshot of the three potential sites that we could identify at this point in time. And again, working in cooperation with the county, uh, what your needs are exactly, we, we, would be, we would love to partner with the county on this proposal. Okay, if I could have a follow-up on that, Madam Chair. Um, so on the two where it's not, where it didn't make it to print, yeah. is that going to affect the size of the, of the main building? Uh, no, no. Thank you. Councillor Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, three to Paul. Quick question. Um, the, the three options 
And I, I apologize for my map reading skills, but are they all on the same site that you're showing us? No. No, they're actually uh, across the road from each other. Yeah. So there's the, uh, okay. on the site number one is on the same side as the no frills. Uh, yep. store and then the other side is on the Harvey Swiss uh, uh, site okay and then the third one is it's the same, it, same thing there it's it's on the Harvey Swiss site just at a different location we have opportunities different opportunities there okay so I think it it goes without saying that Zatia owns all, all the sites yes um, just on the third one there's actually a site plan approval for an 18,000 square foot building that's always been there so again when we come back in two weeks we can speak to the speed that the county may want to proceed and again to Brian's point we would be working together as well with the family health team and other agencies to determine what might be the best uh, solution but um, we do have lots of options that we could investigate okay I appreciate that thank you Councillor Simon thank you madam chair through you to the presenters um, part of my question was answered but would you be prepared to work expeditiously on this project since we have timelines already laid out for us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Councillor Chambers. Just so I understand the request that you're making tonight, the resolution that is on this agenda that we'll be dealing with later, uh, that's a recommendation that will be presented uh, to Council one way or the other uh, in two weeks. And you're requesting that we essentially defer any action on this resolution for two weeks, which we would do anyway because the system works that the recommendation is going to council in two weeks. Am I missing something or are you suggesting that uh, we, we essentially, t I, I'm just not sure the timing situation, if you can elaborate. Our, our preference is to ask for a deferral so that we can make a proper presentation and work with your staff as well in terms of coming back to yourselves but to your point if you if you feel like it's the right thing to do to to approve we would we would respect that as well tonight but our preference is a deferral so, so then you anticipate perhaps changes as a result of your presentation exactly. to this recommendation exactly. and that's why you're asking for the referral yes. yes thank you i understand any anyone else have anything if not, um, when you said you wanted to come back in two weeks, and that's to our next council meeting and present, you said, in camera? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's... A, a more detailed proposal. A more detailed yeah. proposal. Okay. Um, thank you very much, gentlemen. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councilor Gatward, for taking the chair. I appreciate that. Moving along to uh, item 4D, uh, request to speak by Dr. John McDonald. Dr. McDonald, if you could come up, please. Councilor Cardi, Chair, Mayor Eddy, Councilors, and everybody else here, which are great. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to have a conversation. At the beginning of today, I didn't expect I was going to be here tonight talking to you. But as we know, in this wild world of commercial corporate politics, you get to deal with the issues that come up, come on hand. So we are. So obviously, time is of the essence. I made my points very well known uh, when I presented to you a couple weeks ago. But as of this morning, one of the interesting things is I was having a conversation with the recruitment process, which is a critical piece of keeping primary care, physician care, medical care, and team-based care available to both this community and the communities around us, the smaller communities. I was trying to make sure I was current and up-to-date with what the magic formula is to maintain that in a stable and reasonable way. So when I was meeting with her, and I have also uh, had a communication with the Ontario program, which is Health Force Ontario, we were actually we're on the right track. We have a family health organization. We have a family health team. We have good connections to everywhere, actually, because Paris is the place to be. 
what we don't have is a place. And what we talked about is we don't have a place for them to go. So it, at this point, without a place to go, a stable place, not based upon commercial interests, but based upon community interest, that is the piece we're missing. So that was confirmed again today. So we are in the search mode, obviously, to maintain the people we have, to maintain the, uh, the many people that try to get family doctors and be part of our team as we speak. We are on the right track. So I would actually encourage council to proceed, to hear about the commu community interests and take that uh, as the most important part in making a decision to move forward. That's the most important new information. The second information, which you may have presumed, but we have confirmed that all the physicians in town strongly uh, support a community-based, community-owned hub to be part of their future in delivering health care. And third, as I would like to just remind you all, the strength in the community hub is community ownership. We understand there are different ways to get there. We understand that the will of council will be the important guide. But we know that uh, uh, community ownership of, of efforts to build hub-based projects is, what is part of the magic formula of integration and working all together because there's a, a vested interest both in the community, the community council, the community providers to work together to make it a success. So in that regard, I would strongly support and hope that you would proceed with this activity to help us uh, immerse ourselves in the wonderful next step of developing and getting all the ideas and getting this going as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McDonald. Any questions for the doctor? None? Thank you. We'll go back through them for committee. Uh, committee, what would you like to do with 4A? Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Pierce. Uh, any questions, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, since Mr. Maines wasn't here to do a presentation, uh, I'll ask the clerk if we can just receive that. Yep. Member of Committee, Councillor Boma, seconder. Councillor Pierce, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. 4C. How would committee like to deal with that? Councillor Gatward. Seconder. Councillor Miller, are you seconding? Okay. Anyone like to speak to it? Councillor Powell. <coughs> On the proposal we've had at our last meeting and the ones tonight, no matter which one is chosen, is it likely any building would be up and ready to go in August of this year? I can't answer that. I'm not an engineer. I could uh, take this down if you'd let me, Mr. Chairman. You want me to? It's in our report. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other questions? Councillor Pierce? So, no, so we're discussing that later with the report? Is that what I'm hearing? That's what the request is. All in favor? Can I see a show of hands, please? All in favor? Opposed? The motion's carried. Going through to 4D. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moving on to adoptions of previous minute meetings. Corporate development meeting March 12th. Councillor Boma, Councillor Coleman, any questions, concerns? None, all in favor? Opposed, carried. 
Business arising from those minutes, from those uh, minutes. Is there any business arising? Seeing none, we don't have to do anything with that then, right? Moving on to consent items. There are four consent items under A. We can put them all together. Okay, seconder, Councilor Boma. Anyone want anything pulled? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Sorry, there were seven items. My mistake. So have to vote on the remainder of the items? Items five through seven then. Seconder, we have. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Moving on to B, consent items to be received. There are three items. Councilor Pierce, Councilor Boma. Councilor Miller, please. Uh, I got a question on 7B1. Okay. Um, and that's regarding an adverse water quality event. I'm just wondering what the steps are. Are they the same if it's a high salinity or E. coli? And what are the steps? I because I see there was a there was a nonconformance. So I'm just I'm just wondering uh, if we could get a brief summary of how that works. Mr. Bradley, could you address that, please? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I can give that a shot. Alex is not here tonight. He's he's like everyone else in the world is battling the flu. Uh, but, I, but I believe this, the steps are, we have the, the, the adverse um, reaction. We take steps to correct it immediately. We then um, we, we, we notify the overall operator in charge. That's the first step. The second step is to notify the MOE, the Spills uh, Action Center. And the third step is to, uh, to notify the health unit and then to follow the, follow the procedure as it goes from there. So. Yes, Councillor Miller. I'm going to make this personal. At what point do we actually find out if there's a, an adverse water quality event, if it's serious enough? It, sir, sorry, Mr. Chair, I, it's my understanding if it's serious enough, then 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 the appropriate notice would be would be made. A lot of these are, are minor in nature. The ones you're seeing on these these are minor corrections uh, and and little policy gaps or little procedural gaps. But but it's my understanding that we would we would provide appropriate notice, public notice. Uh, it's so that the, the users of the of the, the system are well aware at the same time we would notify the members of council so yeah, I'm just asking because we're the ones that go to jail so thank you <laughs> any other questions for any of the items Mayor Eddie please Seven B one. Item B, corrective action. Mr. Bradley. Is it the correct item? Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Committee reports. Tourism advisory report A. There is a recommendation. Thank you. Anyone like to speak to the recommendation? Councillor Simons, please. If I may, Mr. Chair, certainly. Just very quickly, um, the Arlington Hotel has offered for three months to allow public washroom usage at their hotel and they just asked if we could erect signs to direct people so we're hoping to put two sandwich signs one at the south end and one at the north end for people coming in and going out that they can see where the washroom will be and they're more than happy to do this for us so that's the beginning stages of public washroom so thank you Councillor Simons and thank you for approving this any other question concerns seeing none all in favor Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, staff report corporate services 9A1. Seconder? Thank you. 
If I could just speak to it, sure, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm very pleased that this has come forward and that this is now available to our volunteers and um, um, permanent uh, part-time staff also, I think. Uh, whoever found this, hats off, and I'm glad that this is being taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. General Manager's update, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm here on behalf of Robin Hewitt tonight. She has the flu like everybody <laughs> else does. Thank you. But she had a couple things uh, for me to update you on. Uh, the first is about the OPP detachment. She said that uh, there was a meeting today. The tender will be done by the end of June. They will go to council in August. There will be a contractor on site by the end of September and they are still on target for completion the last quarter of 2019. Uh, the second update was with respect to staff accommodation planning and there's a short-term plan that will come forward in a report in May. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, moving along, operation, general manager's update please. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a few items. Uh, last month, uh, through the council cycle, we talked about uh, new fire halls. We are actually moving very quickly through the designs, and it would be my intent to keep things moving along because I do believe we all want to see these projects continue to move along to bring those designs uh, as a consent report to uh, this month's council meeting, and we would have uh, maybe the, uh, the, the boards um, uh, showing the designs, bigger designs here at the same time so the members could have a look at them. They are pretty straightforward. You already saw some conceptual designs in those earlier reports, so I wanted to give you a, a notice on that. Um, the Paris Downtown Master Plan, the public information session is this Wednesday, and uh, that, that, um, that's going to be at the Wincy Mills, the main floor of the Wincy Mills. It's a bit of a, a mixed public information session and a bit of a design session as well. So we'll be asking the members of the public to provide their thoughts on design. So looking forward to that. We believe we're going to have a good turnout. Uh, as well, we, um, we, we've just re released a, uh, and this, this went through the committee cycle last month, a uh, facility study for the, uh, the recreation facilities in Paris. And we are uh, looking for councillors to get engaged with that. I believe the clerk has reached out to some members, to all the members of council for them to have conversations with the consultant that's doing that work. We do encourage the members of council. I don't believe we've heard back from, from anyone yet. So we, we'd be happy to, uh, to, to have the, the consultant sit down with the members of council. So <laughs> the, the last thing I just wanted to mention is, uh, is a project that we've been working on for a while. It was, uh, you approved me to do this late last year, but it's a servicing plan for Canesville and the airport. We've seen a couple of designs at this point from our consultant. We are still working through what I would call the the technical details with them, but we believe we do have good servicing plans for both Canesville and the airport. So we would hope to have our consultant in front of council in the next couple of months to show you what those plans look like, as well as the costing. And there'll be a, a range of options for council to consider, and then we can uh, we can give you some thoughts on how to move those projects forward. So it's my uh, update, Mr. Chair. Happy for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Any questions to Mr. Bradley? Thank you very much. Moving along to development services, uh, C1, Lake Erie Regional Source Protection Committee member nomination, Mayor Eddy, Councillor Simons. Um, as you know, uh, Mr. Haggard has handed in his resignation for that appointment, and uh, Mr. Paul Emerson looks like he's going to be nominated. I think he'll have lots of time on his hands to do that. Yeah. So, any questions, concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. General Manager's update, please. Mr. Gravel. Yes, I'm here in uh, lieu of our General Manager, Mark Papone, who is also homesick, just like everybody else in the county. So, uh, Just an update on building permits. Uh, right now we are currently having approximately 100 permit applications right now just on housing that we're reviewing at this time. So the workload is starting to come, come through. Uh, so therefore, we're just going to be busy as ever. Uh, this year, as you can tell, we've, uh, we're over $10 million more in construction value as we were last year at this time. 
So again, we could be looking our first year ever over $100 million of the structure for the county by the end of this year. Um, that's pretty well it for the update. Uh, I talked to Rob Trotter. There's not much more. He, he did something at PAC, so yeah. that's all I have for update. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Economic Development Strategic Investment General Manager's Update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Um, in your uh, communications packages, you might have noticed a uh, media advisory um, regarding major motion picture. It's going to be shot in Brantford and the County of Brant. Um, you do have most of the background information, but I did want to um, just communicate to you how well staff work together um, between um, Stebbin Hospice and City of Brantford and county staff. This came uh, quite quickly and was a bit of a scramble um, to pull everything together and get the Arlington on board and all the locations on board, um, but they did an amazing job. Um, and to, so everybody knows the uh, filming that'll take place actually in the county. Most of that will be done the end of the first week in May. Um, most of the uh, cast will be staying at the Arlington Hotel also. So if you see people around during that time, that's, that's what's happening. Um, it's going to be an amazing film, so we're excited about that. Um, phase two of the employment land strategy uh, is moving ahead. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on where we are. We are in the process of all the site analysis and looking at the actual inventory that we've been given by the consultants and looking at the viability of those sites and what we may want to put forward to the province once they come back with their uh, approved methodology, which we hope is going to be any time now. Um, the wayfinding strategy, again, um, we haven't touched base on that in a little while. It is largely completed. Um, and expected to bring, uh, be bringing it forward for approval um, to the next uh, CDC meeting. And the CIP workshops for Burford and St. George took place in March. The, both of them were very well attended. Um, thank you to everybody who came out. Um, a lot of positive feedback, some negative feedback, which is okay. Um, so the consultant is taking all of that in. And there will be another public consultation before the plans are completed. Um, and actually rolled out to the public. So there's still lots of chance for feedback if anybody has any comments that um, they thought of or they hear in, in uh, the respective communities, please let us know. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Newton? Thank you very much for your report. <laughs> Moving on to uh, item E, draft business case for the community health hub. There is a recommendation. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Seconder. Questions, concerns? Councillor Gatward, then Councillor Chambers, then Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we referred um, 4C to this item, and there was someone else that didn't show up. Um, it's quite interesting to see um, after one meeting that was public when Dr. McDonald spoke last month, how quickly this became an a interesting community project. And um, the interest that's been shown here tonight, I, um, I believe that the um, presenter said earlier about providing a temporary site even for the doctors if um, a brand new build isn't ready in time because I think everybody's heard the August date. So I um, would like to see this <clears throat> deferred and um, till we hear from um, the delegation that spoke earlier tonight, I think um, sometimes the um, private sector can partner with us and the doctors to build a great community health hub in collaboration with everyone. So I, I would support the request for a deferral. I, I'm not prepared to move forward. I've never seen a project of this magnitude and this cost 
move forward so quickly. And of course, I understand the urgency, but the taxpayers don't even know about this yet, most of them. Now, maybe they will after tonight, but I, I think we need some feedback. So that's my opinion. And I'm not going to make a motion yet to defer because I'd like to hear from others. Thank you, Councillor Gower. Just, just to give you a little information, the uh, taxpayers are aware of it. They have been aware of it for about a year and a half now, and they've been working with the Health Hub for a year and a half to put something together. So I wanted to just make you aware of that. Well, I realize uh, that, the, sorry, Mr. Chair, I realize that, that the Paris community is, is aware. But no, I don't know. I'm not going to debate this with you, Councillor. The community knows as a whole. Thank you. Moving on to uh, Councillor Chambers, please, and then Councillor Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, or Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, the, the way I understand it, this uh, and the way the procedure works, that this recommendation is a recommendation that will be uh, at the council desk on uh, April 24th, and that gives uh, uh, the, the two weeks that was requested by the delegation to uh, work with staff and uh, also uh, prepare to make a presentation to council uh, prior to this recommendation being acted upon at the council meeting. There's nothing to say that the, uh, as a result of the uh, staff consultations with the, the uh, delegation or the presentation made to them by council uh, would prompt a, a deferral at that time uh, so there's really opportunity to defer this recommendation as a result of hearing uh, what uh, could be presented at that time. There may be the, the as a result of the, the uh, consultation and, and, and deputation that we want to proceed. But if we defer it now, that would put this recommendation uh, off until May 22nd. And that's just a, a, a delay that doesn't necessarily have to be if we want to proceed with the uh, recommendation on April 24th, uh, not in spite of, but after consideration of the delegation's uh, presentation and consultation with staff. So there's really no resolution or reason to defer it tonight because we can still defer it uh, on April 24th and that's the appropriate time if you want to defer it to defer it because uh, you won't lose a month if you don't want to defer it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Coleman, or I'm sorry, Councillor Powell, please. <coughs> In the proposal, it's a, <coughs> a 20,000 square foot building, 10,000 square feet is for physicians, so physicians are the key element. Has senior management consulted with Alice Preston, who's been the physician recruiting person for the last eight or 10 years for Brant County and Brantford, because she could update you on the past history of physician recruitment, what the situation is today, and what it might be in the years going forward. Yes, and, and the lead physician for the FHT, Dr. John McDonald, has been in, in touch with her and, and has been in, no, in discussions about that. Uh, he's just nodded with me and said, yes, he has been in discussions about that whole process. Not to uh, interrupt, but... What would you like to know about it? Is there good news? <laughs> I can't answer that. The only way I can answer that is to get committee's permission to allow Dr. McDonald to come up and speak about it. Would committee allow that? No. I'm, I'm hearing no, not at this time. Okay. Sorry, we can't answer that. Thank you. Councillor Coleman and then Councillor Wheat, please. I think that is opening it up for a little bit. 
partnership with developers or whatever. Yeah. Then I think we need to listen to this. So I'm supporting the referral and, and seeking the second round. Awesome. Awesome. Councilor Gatwood was second. That's a motion. I'll second it, Mr. Yes. Chair. Councilor Obama. And again, I, I have to agree with uh, Councillor Chambers, Member Chambers on this, that um, a deferral will gain us nothing but lose us time. We have the opportunity to review all that uh, at Council, and we can move forward with this as it is right now. And we've already had the developers saying they can work with that also. So I don't understand the point of, of, of deferring it until our Council meeting. And I'm sure that uh, our staff will be more than willing to sit down and chat with uh, developers to see what options there are available to see if we can find something viable. And again, what strikes me is that the, it seems to me that there's been issues regarding a home, permanent home for the doctors in Paris for a very long time. And um, I think the opportunity for uh, private interest to move forward with something that was workable, I think was evaluated quite in depth by our staff. And uh, so I have questions about the viability of that and the affordability of that for the physicians. So. Uh, but again, I look forward to hearing the presentation, see if we can make something happen, but I see no point in deferring this this evening. Thank you. Councillor Wheat. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you through you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. I'm not gonna support a deferral. I second this motion to move it forward. I think we've got some momentum started and we need to continue that momentum. If you listen to both presenters, and I voted to not send the first presenter here. That this is just gonna complicate things. They indicated to me that they're willing to come back with a full presentation at council, which we can receive it then. I would have supported just receiving their report as information. If you listen to the second presenter, which was Dr. McDonald, he, he indicated that the public would like, to, would like to own it, publicly owned building. If you also listen to Dr. McDonald, they can recruit doctors, but right now they don't have a place to put them. So the question about recruitment is immaterial right now because we don't have a spot. I think we've got momentum started. We need to move it forward. The presenter C showed a willingness to come back and present at council in two weeks. And at that time, they'll, they've got two weeks to talk to our staff and indicate what they're gonna present. So the staff is well aware of what they're gonna present. But I'm supporting this recommendation as printed here this evening and not a deferral. Councillor Pierce and Councillor Gower. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Yeah, I, can't, I cannot support a deferral on this either, just, just for that reason. You're absolutely right. We have some momentum on this. Yeah. Let's keep it going. There, uh, a deferral right now is not gonna buy us anything. And as was stated earlier, um, as long as we get to listen to that presentation prior to our final decision on this by council, then there is zero rationale to support a deferral on this. Again, the point would be if we did defer it now and we decided at the at council, that's gonna cost us another month. And as Dr. McDonald said when he was up there, absolutely, we're having troubles recruiting physicians because there's nowhere for them to go. I'm looking forward to, under, to hearing the presentation to see as it shows in one of these things I find it interesting how a future senior center didn't make it to print on some of these, but what did make it to print is a, a thing that says there's already uh, 1,872 site plan approved area in the one plan. That could mean the fact that they could start building next week. Okay, so we're looking for a place, and I'm not, I'm not saying that we're gonna approve that, but I'm saying we're looking for a place to potentially go in, a, in the short term, that could be our answer to that. So again, I can't, afford a I can't support a deferral, it buys us nothing and there is no reason for it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gower, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too, like um, my colleague, we, I have real concerns with the county directing the management and the operation of a community health hub. I don't believe it's the County of Brant's responsibility to run a health hub. I believe health care is under provincial jurisdiction and the taxpayers should not be paying for this building. We have offers tonight for someone else to partner, which is great because we have enough roads and bridges and other infrastructure that we can't afford to fix 
And here we want to spend $6 million on a health hub. I mean, a health hub is great. I'm not opposed to a health hub. I'm just opposed to the taxpayers paying for it. I think, Mr. Chairman, that um, the communities, the other communities in the county that have doctors in them, like St. George and Burford, those doctors develop their own um, offices and business sites. Mr. On Chairman, their own. I'm going to raise a point of order. The resolution that's before us is for deferral. If the councillor wants to discuss and debate the issue of whether or not to have a health club or, or a health hub or not, the appropriate time to do that would be at the council meeting when this resolution is presented. And then she can talk uh, at length about that. But right now she is completely and totally out of order because she is not speaking to the deferral. She's speaking to the uh, whether or not she wants a health hub or not. So I would ask you to make a ruling and ask the uh, councillor to stay on topic. I would agree with you and, and we'll stop that conversation now. Councillor Boma, then Councillor Miller. Um, granted the comments were ruled out of order so they will be disregarded but I would like to ask our Chair of Public Works if we have any roads or bridges that we can't afford to keep up right now. Any specific examples that aren't safe? I, I, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop at this time because and I'll tell you why you're not comparing apples to apples here. You're talking about humans' health versus roads and bridges. So I mean they're two different animals altogether. Let's let's not mix them up together. Councillor Miller, please. Speaking of roads and bridges, no, uh, <laughs> just uh, one statement there from uh, Councillor Pierce. If if we do defer it to the council meeting, it doesn't delay it another month. Just to be clear, right? The decision is made there so if we do defer it it doesn't delay anything as far as I see um, and, I, and I will be honest um, what I see tonight I, I got to give them credit they got some some good uh, some good plans so I, I would like to see their plans before I make a decision so I'll support the deferral Councillor Coleman last speaker thank you just to answer uh, Councillor Bona's concern I am in support of a health hub but I'm not supportive of the county paying the full bill, bill, full bill on it at this time. That is my concern. Thank you. Members of the committee, there is a motion on the floor to defer. And I'd like a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Cardi, just before we, yes. we vote, just to be very specifically clear, so the motion to defer is to defer the report to go to the council on the 24th of April, right? Not for one meeting. That is correct. Okay. Council. Go ahead, Council Chambers. I, I need clarification of that because it goes to the council meeting anyway. Uh, you're, you're deferring something that's going to happen anyway. Like that doesn't make sense. To defer it it's is to there, whether we it deferring it at this committee. the decision until council right yes yes that's my understanding so two two oh. two and a half week deferral uh, council chambers please mr chairman let's use logic here <laughs> you're saying that we're going to defer this recommendation to be uh acted at on at the council meeting in two weeks but this recommendation th th it 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 has to be acted upon to be in, in force by council in two weeks. So we're doing done. exactly the same thing, calling it a deferral that we're not deferring anything because it's going there anyway. So I, I really don't understand the, 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 the resolution and I, I'm gonna have to hear it one more time, I think. Uh, and, and just, and, just and to make, using logic to see if it makes any sense. Right, and, and just to make it clear, what you're saying is, it's not the point of who's paying for it right now. It's the point: are we going to move forward with the project in any way, shape, or form? Is that correct? No, Mr. Chairman. What's before us right now is whether we are deferring this resolution. And I, I, I'm hearing that we're. The resolution is to defer it to council, which under the normal 
proceedings would go there anyway. And that's what's illogical. If you're going to defer it, then are you, you defer no, it and no action is taken so it doesn't go to council. So that's what, what my concern is. And I'm going to ask the clerk yeah. to point on it's, order on that. So it's deferring the report to council, not the resolution, though. Because the report, that way the report goes to council without, count, without the committee taking a position as outlined in the recommendation. So committee's not supporting or not supporting the recommendation of staff. The report's going directly to council. Yes. It makes sense. Yeah. Say that again. It's deferring the report to council, not the resolution. So the report will go directly to council for council's consideration. Not without, CDC. With, not CDC, without a recommendation from the Corporate Development Committee. That's what I understand was, it, we just, I understand that the mover and seconder didn't want this committee putting their spin on it first. Council Chambers. And I understand that, except for one thing. There's a recommendation that's been moved and seconded to support this resolution. So now you're deferring the report. Uh, that, that's, in my mind, out of order. If the resolution to defer the report was made prior to moving the recommendation before us, then that makes procedural sense. What you're deferring at this point, what you can defer at this point, is the recommendation that has been moved and seconded. And in, in my understanding, you can't defer the report because you have an outstanding recommendation that's been moved and seconded and is in order. I, I don't think our procedural bylaw makes that differentiation. Um, I would. But it's, it's the committee's decision and the chair's call, but I would suggest that we can defer the report to, to council because the recommendation will be part of that. Yeah. And, and then, Mr. Chairman, are you going to call the question on the recommendation, which would be in order after this deferring the report to the council meeting? That's where it doesn't make sense. It's part of the report. I believe it's part of it. <laughs> Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, the recommendation is part of the report. It's not separate. It's part of CD 18-32. And we're asking to defer the whole report, which includes the recommendation, to council meeting on April 24th. Councilor Chambers is trying to separate the two, but the recommendation is part of the report. Councilor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So with all that's being said here, muddying the waters, the way that I look at this, there was a recommendation on the table that was moved and seconded. We look after that first. If in fact that is defeated, then it brings into play the deferral. How can you look after the deferral when that motion was made after the original? Well, I believe we've had incidences in the past where a deferral overrode a recommendation. Yes. Really? Is that you correct, can, Madam Clerk? You can ask for deferral on an item that is on the table already. I e. Even the recommendation that's been moved and seconded. I'm really confused now. So the recommendation has been moved and seconded. I want this to be approved. Does that still matter? Or do I got a vote? <laughs> Say that. Let's have a redo. Well, it's, it's my position that the report can be deferred okay. to a recommendation after the recommendation has been put on. After the main recommendation was put on the table, the motion to defer the report, I believe, is in order. But that's up to the chair, and the committee can decide differently. Mayor Eddie? Does staff see any reason why the resolution shouldn't be approved in view of things that have happened this evening? Is there any reason? We can't go forward with it. 
I, I'm not talking about the the technical. Re you're not talking about technical. I'm talking about the the basics of the report. Well, I it's my understanding, um, having worked with the family health team and yes, the doctors, sir. along with Michael, That's what for I'm the last five or six months, and and longer. being aware of what's going on with the Brant Community Health Care System yes, and sir. their need for space in the Willet because of their need for space in the Brantford General, which helps our entire community. Um, I, I know that there's an urgency yes, to sir. keep things moving. Now, I think what we're discussing here are the technicalities of getting to a decision at the end of the month. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to wade into that. Which we You're may the or may not get to. I beg your pardon? Which we may or may not get to as a council. <laughs> but, um, but obviously, and you heard Dr. McDonald, and you've heard us speak in the past, and you know yourself, the quicker we can make a decision, the better. Thank you. Agreed. Councilor Coleman. We were moving on this about nine years ago. So I don't think it'll fill two weeks will make any damn difference. Call the vote. Yes, call the vote. Everyone's clear on the deferral motion? Yes. What are we deferring? Clear as mud. We're deferring the report. Go ahead. All in favor? If this is a recorded vote. Can we have the clerk give the motion again, please? Yes. Just to be clear. Yes. Clerk, clerk. The report? The motion is that uh, staff report CD1832, draft business case for Community Health Hub, be deferred directly to Council on April 24th. That is the deferral. It is a recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? Madam Clerk? Okay. Yep, the motion is defeated. We'll go back to the original recommendation. There is a recommendation before us. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Good. Okay, moving on. Go to sleep. No, nope, we're moving on. Uh, number 10, there are no communications. 11, no matters referred by council. 12, other business. CAO's update, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple things. As you know, we've spent a lot of time on the health hub, and I, I just need to clarify one thing. Are, are we directed as staff, though, to work with the, the gentleman that made a presentation? Okay, okay. I, so that's clear. Okay, that's clear. That's right. Okay, that's right. That's fine. I need to clarify that. It's confused in my mind, sorry. Uh, we have an all-staff meeting on April the 17th, and I would encourage all of you to attend that meeting. This is the third all-staff meeting we've had, and we've tried, or maybe the fourth, but we've tried to get speakers of general interest in, not only to staff, but to our members of council. And this particular speaker is, is focusing on customer service, and I know that that's a it's something that the council speaks of all the time. It's something that we're always trying to work on and improve where possible. Yes. And so I would encourage all of you to attend. It's at the, the uh, Paris Agricultural Society, Paris Fairgrounds on the 17th. So um, I was at the SCORE annual meeting along with uh, the mayor and Councillor Chambers and the uh, first one I've attended in a number of years. That was last week, two weeks ago now. I don't know whether Anybody wanted to comment that was there about boat score in general, but I, I just, I, I think the, the meeting I attended it seemed to be very vibrant um, of uh, camaraderie amongst the four 
participating municipalities there. There's a speaker from the OFA. Was it the OFA? Yeah, ex-president of the yeah, OFA. Yeah, president of the OFA. It was excellent talking about farm businesses and Thank opportunities you. and that kind of thing, which really, I think, resonated to the people from Elgin, um, Ox Oxford, uh, Norfolk, and, of course, Brant, farm community. So it was excellent. And the uh, only other comment I was going to make was Today at Community Services, there was some talk, um, a motion was passed directing staff to, to pull some things together regarding the advisory committees in terms of reference. I note too, and Allison reported on it, that the Economic Development Advisory Committee just went through a soul searching sort of thing looking at their mandate. And I know the chair of the Tourism Advisory Committee has, uh, has expressed similar concerns. So, I, it's an observation I've had from uh, sitting in on and, and participating to a certain degree on a number of the advisory committees that um, it's always good to look at their terms of reference. I remember when I was a citizen on a recreation advisory committee and, and if you feel you're contributing and their recommendations are, are relevant to what council needs and getting listened to, that's wonderful. But if you think you're off on tangents or you're, you're not getting listened to, it's, it's really demoralizing for our citizenry. So I was encouraged to see that, and I would encourage council to, to continue to look at those mandates from time to time. It's Thank really you. important. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Any questions to see you? Mayor Eddie, please. We accept the unkind <clears throat> invitation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, CEO Emerson. Thank you. Uh, Motion to go on camera, please. Councillor Pierce, seconded by Councillor Coleman. All in favor? Two minutes, please. Hey, the year's going like crazy. All right, get out of here.